All right, good afternoon, Tampa. Thank you guys again for joining us for our Facebook Live. It's Friday, which is very hard to believe. It seems like the entire week has, has uh, melded into one day. So uh, we are here with yet another incredible uh, guest, Carol Post, and I will introduce her officially in a moment. We also have Dessa is wandering around here, so uh, if you hear rattling or she jumps up, don't worry about it. That's uh, Dessa the Wonder Office Dog, Alka Dessa. So the cases uh, are continue to increase, 917 total cases in uh, Hillsborough County. Um, the uh, fatalities are the same, 18. There are 24,119 total cases in Florida and 686 deaths statewide. Uh, those cases will continue to climb as we do more testing. Um, hopefully we will be able to uh, keep the, the number of deaths static. You may have seen the governor on a press conference this morning from South Florida. They are opening up additional testing sites in South Florida. And then we anticipate opening uh, additional testing sites here in Hillsborough County. There will be a site at Lee Davis Center over off of 22nd Street. Uh, we'll open next Wednesday. And so we'll be able to do testing there. There are a number of testing sites you know, that, that um, uh, private physicians and healthcare uh, providers have out in the uh, city and the county that you can go and get tested at. Again, we have the drive-up location at Raymond James Stadium. And if you want to be tested and you're, you're having the symptoms, uh, the number is 813-272-5900. You call there, they have a call uh, center. You call and individuals will, will basically ask you what the symptoms are. We have gone away from those original parameters where you really had to, to fit into... Um, uh, a category, a pretty tight category, in, in my opinion, of international travel, having uh, signs and symptoms, being around individuals who had been diagnosed, and now basically if you have uh, any signs and symptoms and you want to be tested, then you can get tested. And I would suggest for everyone that, that can get the test to please get the test. As I have indicated previously, we had... Um, we have ordered the antibody testing, and I think that that is the, the antibody testing will show individuals who have had the virus and were asymptomatic and now have a level of immunity, which will allow them to go back out in public, back out into the workforce. And so <clears throat> getting as many people as we can tested for the antibodies, I think is going to be a great start in getting our economy back on track. And so with that said, uh, there has been a report, a three-phase report released on opening the economy back up. Uh, what it requires first and foremost is a larger number of our citizens being tested for this virus. As it stands now in the state of Florida, we have tested just over 1% of our, our population. And so we really don't know who has the virus, who's out there carrying it around. And so, again, if you have any of the symptoms, please go and get tested. Now, a lot of people are talking about the health and, and safety of our community and the economy. Both of those areas concern me greatly, and, and I clearly have a level of responsibility for both of those but I don't think that they are mutually exclusive. Clearly, the health and safety of our community is, is paramount, but we have to look at the economy and we have got to get you know, back up on our feet and looking at uh, recovery. We have our Economic Development uh, Corporation. They are putting a group together, a task force, and they're gonna look at um, the needs within our community the Hillsborough County area and exactly uh, what areas will necessitate workers in, where we would look at workforce training, um, all kinds of data that they will be able to provide for us that really will be somewhat of a roadmap to getting back up on our feet uh, economically. 
But again, I don't see those two as mutually exclusive. It's one of the reasons that I pushed yesterday to have the, the face coverings in certain uh, instances. And that is because I truly believe that's going to be one of the changes. That's going to be one of our new normals, is individuals are going to wear face coverings in certain instances. We go through the flu season in the future, those types of things. So I really want to, it will also help out our small businesses in Tampa because it will allow individuals to get back out into the workforce there if they are having, have the uh, face coverings on. So that's an issue that I will continue um, to uh, promote. And we have issued face coverings to all of our city employees. I know that the county has ordered them for their employees. And we are currently trying to uh, get businesses to cooperate and, and mandate uh, face coverings for their employees. So that is an update on the opening of the economy. We have to look at that area by area. And here in the city of Tampa, we are very densely populated. If you look at Hillsborough County, we have twice the density that they have out in the county. So that's a concern for us in the transmission of the virus to a lot, uh, a lot more up close contact here. So we are uh, looking at all of those, those areas, you know, how we can keep everybody safe and healthy, and then what we can do uh, for the economy. So very important. And with that said, what we are doing right now is um, trying to help out our citizens inside the city of Tampa and then our small businesses as well with the rollout of One Tampa. And again, that is trying to provide the, the, the relief now and rise together is the slogan for that. So we're trying to provide relief, sort of a, a gap uh, here, gap um, funding for when some of the federal or the state funding comes down. People are waiting on their unemployment checks. The uh, PPP has, has already uh, been exhausted. And so just trying to help people out with utility bills and rent or mortgage. So we started that program today. We launched it at noon. Carol Post is not only the creator of it, but uh, she is overseeing that. So Carol came, Carol is a, a Florida native and actually grew up just a little south of here. And then she went um, to, she's traveled around a little bit, but was uh, deputy mayor under Bloomberg for eight years up in New York City and decided to move back here. Uh, went to work with, for USF uh, School of Medicine and built the USF Mersani uh, Medical School, that project. And then in the dead of night, we went over and stole her away from USF. So if USF calls and asks where she's at, you haven't seen her. But we stole her, and now she is um, the head. She's one of our administrators here in the city of uh, development and economic opportunity and has done an incredible job over in that area. So here's how it works as the mayor. I always say we are going to do something, and when I say we, that means everyone around me. So I said we need a program that we can help our citizens and our small businesses with some financial relief. And so Carol and a, a small army took on that task and literally, literally have been working day and night to get that up and moving. So I would like to first... I don't think people have any idea what goes on behind the scenes in the development of a program like this. So could you just give a, a overview of what, ha, what it took to create this one Tampa application? Well, thank you for having me here today. It's sort of like um, the Wizard of Oz, right? <laughs> it looks magical from out front, but all the machinery that's happening behind the curtain is where the magic is really happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, it certainly has been an army uh, that has put this together and there are a lot of components to it. We tried to do something in a very short period of time and I think the um, following your leadership in that direction which was we have a, a very vulnerable part of our community that needed the help most 
to bridge to when these mm -hmm. other funds and resources would become available. And so we tried to tailor the program around that most vulnerable population, both for individuals and for businesses. And in doing so, running two different application um, concepts, and you have to have the technology, the process, the plan, the protocols, and the people mm -hmm. uh, to really carry it out. And so all of that has been in the works for the past week and a half. And as with anything like this, it won't be perfect, but I hope that we will be able to bring some relief to many uh, Tampanians uh, in a short uh, time period. We launched at noon today, and it has been a very busy day. <laughs> it has been an incredibly busy day. The, um, when we launched at noon, there were already about four, almost 5,000 uh, visitors to the website ready to sort of kick through, and they, they, they pushed through to the application, and, uh, and away we went. And we have been nonstop. I've been at the call center uh, operation all afternoon, and um, we have. When I left, we had a, almost a thousand uh, submitted applications, and probably about ten thousand in the queue with people going through the process of completing those applications. So there's obviously an enormous demand. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate that we won't be able to fulfill all of that demand. Um, but we'll do as much as we can. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that process will roll out for the businesses on Tuesday. We'll have some lessons learned from our experience today to try to ensure that that process will go as, smooth, as smoothly as possible. And um, uh, there's a lot of people to thank for getting us here, uh, but also I'd like to thank those people who called, who visited our website, who have gone through the application process. I appreciate the patience that they've had I listened in on many calls. I participated with a couple of calls today, and I know that people are very eager to yes. get into the process and take advantage of it, and we really appreciate the efforts mm -hmm. that they have taken and their patience as we work through it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's something, too, you know, that, that um, I won't say there was any pushback, but, you know, concern that these types of programs take months to build and, in essence, you were given a week, you know, to, to put this together is, is the bottom line. So again, the patients, um, just so everyone understands, we're in partnership with a crisis center of Tampa Bay who is doing an amazing job and you can call the 211 and then hit seven and, and you will go to um, uh, the call center, correct? Mm -hmm. So then you'll go to our call center or go online and that's where the majority of individuals have, have gone online and the online process, the actual platform for it is a HUD platform, right? Housing and Urban Development? Well, the requirements are driven by okay. HUD. The platform is a private sector. Um, okay. It's used by many uh, cities around the mm -hmm. country. It's a pretty standard um, application tool, uh, but we, we sent a lot of traffic to it today. Yeah. And as we like to think, you know, we are on the cutting edge and we're first in everything. Apparently, there were several cities throughout the United States. I was on a conference call with the U.S. Conference of Mayors earlier, and um, two other mayors were talking about a similar program that they had launched today as well. And so uh, the, the feedback about the possibility of overloading this platform was that, no, you really can't do that. We can handle it all. But, you know, having so many cities and then so many individuals, we had estimated, and really it is a guess, of around a 1,000 individuals to help with this. And as you've heard, on the very first day, uh, you know, before 5 o'clock, less than five hours, we've already had a 1,000 applications filled out. So, again, as I've said in a, a variety of different... Um, uh, issues, patience, please, just some patience. We're here to help you, and uh, we're going to do everything that we can to, to make sure that, that we can get you uh, some financial relief as soon as possible. So I appreciate all that you have, have done with that. Sure. It really is wonderful. Why don't you give a little bit of the, um, the background on the, the program, like who we're mm -hmm. looking to help and what the parameters are for qualification, and then um, also, you know, talk about the website and then actually going into the application, too. 
Yeah, in a Just nutshell. So all of this information is available on the web um, in terms of who's eligible and what some of the steps are to take. The, um, the, the nature of it is for individuals that it is available to anyone across the city of Tampa as long as they are a resident of Tampa. Um, and there, are, there is a uh, income limitation. Again, this is meant to target those that are most vulnerable. So there's an income limitation that is set by Housing and Urban Development. Uh, for a person who makes not more than 80% of the average median income. So it's a, mm -hmm. a lower uh, uh, bar for income. And, um, and in fact, the site, if people aren't, we had a lot of calls from people from outside the city. Some people aren't sure their address says Tampa, but they're actually mm -hmm. located outside of the yeah. actual municipal city limits. So there's an address verification function there that you can put your address in and verify whether you actually are within located mm -hmm. within the city limits or the call center team will conduct that test for you. Um, so for individuals that qualify, um, we can pay up to $1,000 for a rent or a mortgage that is either past due or is coming due and the person will be struggling to make that payment as well as utilities for gas, water, or electricity. Same thing, if it's either you're overdue on that, those bills or if your bill is coming due, let's say in May, and you're going to struggle to make that payment. So that's we're really trying to be right on top of keeping people current for the most essential needs, which is mm -hmm. your, your, right. your home and, and your mm -hmm. shelter. Um, on the business front, uh, likewise, looking at the, some of the smallest businesses that operate um, and that operate in our lower income census tracts. And that's again a HUD standard that applies to that, um, to that grouping. So it's not across all of city limits. Uh, there is again a map and a way that we can uh, help the individuals indicate whether they qualify from a geographical perspective. And then the business needs to earn less than $250,000 in revenue in a year, have less than five employees, um, and have been in business for a minimum of five years. And on that front, what we were focusing on was businesses who had been established, who were successful, and but for this crisis would have continued on so, but now they've mm -hmm. hit this wall mm -hmm. and they're really struggling. So again, trying to just fine tune and target, we didn't have enough for everyone. So mm -hmm. where did we want to focus our efforts? So again, for the um, businesses, it's up to $4,000 for their rent or their mortgage for either a past due or a soon to be due and up to $250, I'm sorry, up to $1,000 for their utility bills that might be uh, coming due. And um, as part of the application process, as the mayor, as you said, was uh, we've, we saw a lot of applications come through on their own. There was mm -hmm. no reason that it actually the system if you can, when you get into it, it's only a couple of pages of, uh, of uh, clicks through that you fill out and answer the questions, and then you submit. You can upload a copy of your bills or your rent, and you mm -hmm. push those through. But those that needed a little more assistance were calling in, and the call center can follow along and literally just help people. Here's how you answer this yeah. question. Here's how you upload. And in a couple of occasions, the call center was actually doing the application for the person if they don't have a computer or they don't have a phone. Mm -hmm. And okay. so our expectation, again, with working with the Crisis Center for the individuals is that there's a process behind the scenes, behind that curtain. <laughs> we validate that all of the d documentation is sufficient, and then we make the payment directly to the landlord or the lender um, and then directly to TICO for electricity or gas and, in fact, actually pay ourselves for, for utilities. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it should be relatively pain-free for the individual who qualifies. The payments will be made directly on their behalf. And, um, and then our hope is that they're taking advantage of some of these other federal uh, programs and um, and resources and that we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and our goal is to help bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. And then the the Facebook, uh, the Facebook, um, the uh, web page, you can go to that and then you can prepare for the application and have what you need and you can actually take photographs of things that you need, uh, bills, IDs, whatever it is that you need you can take a photograph of that and then upload it from mm -hmm. your phone. And you can actually apply via phone um, as well. 
So there are, you know, a number of ways that, that you can apply for it. All right. Um, how can residents or small businesses support One Tampa? Well, I think through the, um, the notion of those businesses that are, are continuing and remaining active, mm -hmm. they're, the One Tampa program is a relief program, and it's also a philanthropic program. And the relief program is somewhat dependent on the philanthropic component. Mm -hmm. So we would hope that businesses and, and residents that are not as, uh, that are not um, suffering as much or as, as impacted by uh, the stay at home um, guidelines, some businesses are still actively in business that they can help and contribute, mm -hmm. which will offset the, the needs of those that are more, mm -hmm. that are struggling more. Yeah. And that, um, that is something that our community is, is, you know, so wonderful because of our citizens. And so you've heard me say it before, if you haven't been affected in some way um, by the virus, losing your job, having your, your pay cut, or, you know, unfortunately having um, contracted the virus, if you can in any way help out, if you receive a, a check from the government and you haven't been impacted in any way, you can donate that to One Tampa and help those individuals that have been dramatically, dramatically impacted by this. So we would love to have those donations. And this program is funded by a series of, of um, donations in essence. It's Part of it is grant funding that, that we are using uh, that came from housing and urban development. As we said, the application process actually comes from HUD. And so that's why some of those questions are on there that, that you may think are a little invasive. Those are required by HUD. So some money out of that, which is around $2 million, we are very hopeful that um, the community uh, redevelopment areas, the CRAs, that the board, which is the city council, that they will agree in their next meeting to allow interest from those CRA funds. And for those who don't know, a CRA, in essence, it's a geographic area where any uh, taxes that are paid within that geographic area go back into that CRA fund to be spent in that. Uh, area there there by the name the redevelopment and so we're looking just to hopefully use the interest a small portion of the interest in those areas uh, to be able to provide relief in in these utilities and rent or mortgage and that should be around two million as well and then the city has an emergency fund that is utilized for the most part in hurricane storm recovery and so we're looking to use a portion of that to match up to $2 million in donations. And so an aspirational goal for us is $8 million for this program, which sounds like an incredible amount of money because it is an incredible amount of money. But when you look at the need in our community, you know, to have a thousand applications already filled out, which was, which was an anticipation, an anticipated limit for the entire program and we've had that in less than five hours so a lot of people a lot of our citizens that are in need and that really um, speaks to the need for the rest of us to stand up and do what we can uh, to donate to help out so thank you very much i know it's a lot of hard work a and <laughs> i apologize for that so let's see what else do we have um Let's talk for a second about virtual permitting. I know that's one of the ways mm -hmm. that your particular area has had to make a lot of adjustments uh, dealing with COVID-19. You have a lot of your team, anybody who can, you have them working from home. Mm -hmm. But talk about some of the responsibilities in your area that require uh, our team members to go out in the field and how you're addressing that. Yeah, you know, I think you're hearing a lot, and I, you've had different, so many different guests that have talked about how, this, um, how we're adapting to the stay-at-home orders is resulting in possible 
She's got an, her yeah, own agenda. <laughs> Getting in a wrestling match. She wants to be a guest Odessa. one day. She's chewing um, on tape. But there's like a whole new way that you can do business, um, depending on what the nature of the business is, that I think is revealing itself. And that's certainly the case with our planning and development department and our construction services. And so for folks who know if you're doing a renovation to a home or building a high rise or a new building, you go through the through the construction services department and um, and that typically means you submit plans or you you come in and have documents reviewed and then inspectors come and inspect the work as it's underway and it's a very interactive experience and so when the stay uh, safer at home orders came down in fact construction is deemed an essential service mm -hmm due to the Homeland Security standards, and that's a good thing. It's a very essential economic driver sure to is. every community. Mm -hmm. And so that has been able to continue, but we certainly had to adapt how it's done. So we made our entire permitting depart and, and inspections department virtual. So where people, and we've had an electronic system for some time, but now we've kind of put it on Mach 10 uh, <laughs> to build it up, and all of our plan reviewers and permit clerks and uh, uh, permit facilitators are all operating remotely, and yet the machine is still running, and mm -hmm. it's really telling. I think we're continuing to deliver great service, and people are uploading documents and be able to call email, have Zoom meetings or go to meetings and have a human interaction without actually having to be near each other. And then what's most interesting is the inspection piece. So that sort of begs the question, well, an inspector has to go to physically be able to yeah. see something, but they don't actually. That's the beauty of our digital world. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the ability to, they're literally using FaceTime and some things. We didn't have to go buy a whole new system, but they can do FaceTime they can stream video, either live or recorded video, where someone will take an image of whatever it would be to be inspected. Um, and so those things are underway, and I really credit the team, the permitting team and the inspection teams and those folks who have thought outside the box of how can we keep this engine moving mm -hmm. and, and yet do it safely both for ourselves and for our, for our clients, particularly if you think of someone who, let's say they're installing a swimming pool or they're expanding a, a room in their home, if we weren't doing this, they'd be stuck in the right. middle of a construction project. <clears throat> and you know, sometimes people are renovating kitchens and bathrooms, and mm -hmm. we're in this uncertain time. And the last thing you want is to be stuck in a construction project yeah. in your home. So the ability to allow that to continue, and yet to not have to have inspectors enter those homes or have that human interaction, I mm -hmm. think we've really tried to be creative about that. The one other piece is our very large construction projects which aren't quite as easy to do with a FaceTime type video. The, the work is sophisticated, it's complicated, and it's, um, it demands a, a bit higher degree. And so in that case, those workers are all working on those sites, but we introduced the, um, the concept of an occupational safety inspection. Mm -hmm. So in addition to actual inspections that will occur uh, through a series of ways, we now have occupational um, safety inspectors that are visiting 50 of our largest construction sites to make sure that those sites are adhering to these safety standards. It's not about the construction mm -hmm. as much as it is about the safety. So are they keeping six feet away in distance? Are they sanitizing? Do they have the tools on the site to sanitize? A lot of these large sites have now brought in mobile hand washing stations. Some, many of them are doing pre-screening before people enter the job sites. We've, uh, there's no food service available on the site, so you're really limiting the back and forth activity. And nothing's perfect, but right. I think we've really raised the bar mm -hmm. on visibility and awareness for these large sites so that they can continue, but they can do it safely. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that's something, again, dealing with the, the groups of mayors that I'm involved in. Uh, involved with, I, I uh, talked about that program and no one else had had, yeah. had it. So we've actually shared that with a couple of different uh, municipalities. And then also when you first came on board, actually you were still in a dual role. Um, we put together the task force for um, the uh, development services. Mm -hmm. And so the reason for that was 
we were so incredibly busy with the construction and, and everything booming, but we had the same number of employees, so it was difficult to keep up. And so we were looking for those efficiencies, and one of those was to be able to do a lot of the inspections through FaceTime, through those. So there were a couple of those efficiencies that really um, may not have already been in place mm-hmm. and fully functioning when COVID-19 came, but we all had to address things on the fly yep. and, and adjust. Uh, and your team has done that very, very well. Yeah, it certainly amplifies. I think I've shared the stories with you. I, I was in New York City. I worked for the city of New York during 9-11. And following that, there was certainly a whole new way of operating. I worked for the buildings department, and so a similar scenario of the city really desiring to quickly get return people to their homes and businesses to their activities. And we, ha- we had to overcome kind of, you know, this is the way we've always done it, routine, and under duress. And when you're under, when you're, when you're subject to these challenging situations, Sometimes the silver lining is that you find new and improved ways to do things, and then hopefully they stay around. The, yeah. the challenge passes, but the innovation right. stays with you. Yeah, and that's going to happen. We're going to have so many, you know, the new normal, as, as uh, we said, and it, it'll be very interesting. But um, I talked to another uh, executive of, of one of the largest companies here in the city today and talked about how easy it was for so many team members to transition to working from home. And so there really is going to be a lot of, of changes. It's funny, while we have just been talking, we've already had 76 additional applications uh, completed. So, so as we increase, that's great. That really is wonderful. All right, let's go to uh, some questions. Vivian Haywood asks, and hey, Vivian, how are you? I know Vivian very well asks, uh, the president spoke of three phases to open the economy. Will there be a fourth phase implemented for us as a city county? Actually, the opening back up of the economy um, was put in the hands of governors of the different states. And again, it's um, not a one-size-fits-all. You can have very rural areas that will be easy to open back up. And, And, you know, if you just look at the different types of industry, you know, you can have um, states where agriculture or areas where that are de- um, uh, sparsely populated and agriculture may be their main industry or you have a state like ours where we have a large area of agricultural um, areas in our state, but we also depend on tourism. And then we have here in the city of Tampa, we are very, very diverse and that really was something that I know previous mayors worked on and certainly a goal of mine to make our city as diverse as we possibly can so that when there was an economic downturn we would be able to to um, weather it much better and then recover more quickly than other areas and so I think that the our governor uh, DeSantis has taken that first step in increasing the number of tests that will be administered in our state so we can get some data to make decisions off of. You know, if we only have 1% of our population tested, you can't make informed decisions off of of 1% of the information. And so, um, you know, those decisions will continue to be made, hopefully with the input of the cities and the counties throughout our state. Uh, Let's see, Natasha. Uh, Goodley, another uh, individual I know very well, was asking about the paper applications for um, our one Tampa. We are not going to provide paper applications. This is just uh, uh, basically um, how did you gave a great analogy earlier about? The oh, f- like yeah. Well, and and I can comment also just on the paper. We're giving a little thought to that, but the notion of like. Um, you know, if you go to a football game or a lightning game, there's sort of the crush that happens because the game is at a certain time and everyone wants to get there at the same time, which was really what happened with us today. But once everyone gets through the gates and there's the security and all of that you have to go through and then you find your seat and you get to sit down and you enjoy the, the game, the entertainment, but it's that crush piece that mm-hmm. is 
that that's what we're experiencing right now. Um, in fact, I think the numbers testify, we're, is this over a thousand now? We're over a thousand applications in about five hours. Yeah. So people are getting through the gate, if you will. They're finding their seat. They're able to sit down. It is unfortunate that there is still this crush um, that's coming through, but I guess it really is a testament to how much need there is. Um, and so we're considering whether having a paper application, we say paper, it would really probably be a print, uh, you could print from the website, um, but it would eliminate your need to have to go into the application if, there, if this mm -hmm. crush continues. I think if it eases somewhat, it's really the preferred path is to use that system. It's a very simple system. You can upload right from your phone, and um, we've tested it in a number of ways. But there are some folks that it's just not going to work for them. And if there is this continued crush, if we can have an alterna alternative method, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll give it okay. a shot. But even calling into the the uh, the center, the two one one, and then and then hitting seven, uh, will take you to the call center, and the individuals can even help you fill out the application right there. So, so um, I just you know, would, we should be good. I would just share the similarly the you know the notion of that crush. Uh, at the midpoint this afternoon, about 4 o'clock, we were receiving 113 calls a second. 113, 113 calls a second. 113 calls a second. Uh, about six, uh, almost 7,000 calls an hour. Wow. So it's, I mean, it's just a lot to manage. And we do want to, I mean, we will. We will manage it. We will get to everyone. But again, that notion of patience, we're just, everyone's trying to get into the stadium at the same right. time to see kickoff. And, it's and literally, our call center would have to have over 100 people in it to be able to, yep. which is not happening. Yeah. We don't have uh, that many. All right, um, let's see. Uh, That's Larry via Twitter. Oh, what does she have? She, Did oh, she take my no. mask? Oh, uh, Larry via Twitter asks, are you going to help raise the $275 a week uh, that's the lowest in the country? Um, and basically what he's talking about is the, uh, he's talking about the unemployment current rate here in the state of Florida. Uh, I don't control that, but I certainly can make my voice heard and your voice heard in Tallahassee, uh, $275 a week. It, no one can can sus sustain themselves, much less a family, off of two hundred and seventy-five dollars uh, a week. So I think that that has gotten enough uh, publicity that it will be changed. I believe the 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 um, through the federal government, it's six hundred dollars a week and double the amount of of time. All right, Scott Chambers. It's been a struggle for us to sign up for unemployment in Florida. Now one Tampa, people are starting to get overwhelmed. I myself hadn't had money coming in the household since March 9th. Help. Scott, I know you've probably been asked to be patient, but um, we, will, we will have this. We have it up and running again. It's just that initial crush. Let's see. Uh, Juan Davis, he owns Tampa T-shirts. He said, my company nearly closed until we started manufacturing masks last week. Now we can't keep up with the demand. Hmm. That's like a, a, a new, a new, I know. new, right? We need sewing machine operators. It pays well and can be done from home or at our facility. Please let me know if you have any ideas on getting the word out in the local community. Hmm. We have jobs. How do we fill them fast? Well, Juan, we just got the word out. And we will be able to, uh, anybody that has a sewing machine, uh, you can be gainfully employed. And I know there are a lot of people across the city that are volunteering to uh, make those masks as well. So our Parks and Recreation, uh, some of our employees along with volunteers have been making those as well. And uh, they actually made one for me that coordinates very well with my outfits that I've been wearing. So um, do we have any other questions from social media? Yeah, just a few comments. 
comments actually that I'd like to highlight. Cynthia Clemens says the building portal really has improved and she's seen a drastic improvement on that level. Excellent. Um, another question, Governor DeSantis has given the green light to open the beaches and parks. What are your thoughts? Uh, I haven't heard Governor DeSantis say that. I believe that in Pinellas County, I think that he's left that open uh, to the municipalities. He put out his version of the Safer at Home order. Uh, however, he said that in follow-up, the frequently asked questions, if you look at those, says that um, counties and municipalities can go beyond the restrictions that he has put in place. And I know Hillsborough County closed their parks. We have closed our parks, although we have six uh, walking, jogging, bicycling trails that are still open. Again, I ask everyone, if you're going out to exercise, please do it in your own neighborhood. We can't have uh, large groups that are congregating on the, the river walk or on Bayshore because then we'll have to close those down as well. So please, please, please exercise in your own area and our beaches are still closed. Another question. The COVID pandemic is taking an economic toll on Floridians. The last thing we should be concerned about is our water being shut off. Is the city of Tampa doing anything to halt water service shutoffs and our late fees during this pandemic being removed? Yes, we have halted uh, the water shutoffs. And again, with the one Tampa, uh, that will pay up to $250 in utility bills as well. So there will be no water shutoffs. And one more question. Can you please see the, say the name of the company hiring for our seamstresses? Yes. It is uh, Juan, it was Tampa T-shirt, Juan Davis, and he owns Tampa T-shirts. Juan, get ready. We can loan a call center to you if you need <laughs> it. We're doing well. All right, so everybody, please remember, I love every single day seeing all those photos and those videos of the dance party. Dessa's ready to dance. She's actually ready for a treat. But um, remember, all of the stations in our uh, outstanding relationship with iHeartRadio, and I know they're not all here because there's only four of them, uh, 95.5 The Beat, uh, Roomba 106.5, 98 Rock, US 103.5, I know 100.7, and I'm missing one more. No, you got 98. Anyway, there are six of them. Please, at 6 o'clock, go outside, say hey to your neighbors, and dance like nobody's watching. And the song is going to be what else but working for the weekend. So let's go out there and see some very creative uh, dance moves. And it really has been wonderful to watch. And it's such a, uh, just a, such an uplifting uh, event. So please get out there and dance. All right, let's see what I have not covered in the closing here with this. Oh, remember that um, to text Tampa Ready or Tampa Lista or Tampa Biz to 888-777. If you need to talk to someone, we still have our call center, although they're going to be pretty busy with, with the One Tampa applications, but you can call 833-TPA-INFO. And then again, for testing, if you want tests uh, for COVID-19, call 813-272-5900, and uh, they will help you out. Uh, text all of your photos, your dance photos, or any photos, really, to City of Tampa, at City of Tampa, and then hashtag Happy at Home TPA. So thank you again for joining us. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you again. I know how frustrating it is to stay inside. Um, it's Friday night, so let's all order out from your local restaurant and hope su help support them. Uh, please, please, please help the small businesses out there. And again, if you're in a position you haven't been affected by this virus, we are an amazing community. And the reason we're amazing is because we all come together in a time of need. I haven't seen many times that there was more of a need than there is right now. So let's help each other out. Help out financially if you can. Check on your neighbors. Do a kind deed for somebody else. And remember to 
uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and let's make kindness more contagious than this virus in our city. So thank you all and God bless.